All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the Richard Listens Show. I'm Peter Sobey, and I'm not going to do too much yakking. I'm going to bring Richard right into the fray here. Dr. Richard Olberger. Thank you, sir. Yes. So here we both are. It's a, it's a Monday, October 10th, 2016. It's been a really, uh, this is probably about the best time of year for sports. Since, you know, we do kind of, for the most part, kind of tip on the sports side with sports psychology and stuff. And as you can see, I'm sporting my lucky green Chicago Cubs hat. That's right. And good luck to your team tonight. Thank you. I've actually got the stream going right below me here so I can keep up with it. So <laughs> I hope you're not trying to keep yourself from the game. But it looks like it's the bottom of the fourth and the Cubs have a three to one lead. So it's very exciting. And it's only fair. You sacrificed to be here with us. I was going to say, Richard, now you know just how much I care about you and your show that <laughs> I'm not out with all my Chicago peeps watching the Cubs playoff game. But I'm here. But That's I'd rather right. be nowhere else. Better man than I. If this was a World Series game, I don't know. Might be flying solo, huh? Yeah. It's all right. Jarvis can step in. Yeah, exactly. Our awesome, awesome engineer technician of the show, Jarvis. Jarvis Dixon, right? Or no, Essex. Essex. Jarvis Essex. He is the man. He he uh, he really keeps things running smoothly and gets all the graphics up there, all that sort of thing. And I always like mean to give him more props than we do. So thank you, Jarvis. So... And I just want to mention, too, the reason why I'm wearing this Cubs hat tonight is that this is the hat that I wore last year when I saw the Cubs in Los Angeles when Jake Arrieta threw his no-hitter against the Dodgers. I was there as well. Right. And so, uh, you know, I've been wearing it every playoff game so far, so it's been working. So I figured, you know, I'll wear it tonight on the show, too, because the Cubs are playing right now, and I'm hoping for some success here tonight. But anyway, but that's enough about the Cubs and stuff. And But I say it's an exciting time for sports because, you know, we've talked about the Olympics in the past. Those just ended. But right now it's like the excitement of playoff baseball. Football is in full steam. You know, basketball and hockey is in preseason about to get going full steam. So it's like such an exciting time. But we're not going to be talking about all of that excitement because there's a whole other excitement that we're going to talk about. No one can become a high-level athlete like that without proper nutrition. Am I right? You're definitely right. It's part that's probably the most often overlooked or taken for granted when we're younger and we can burn extra calories probably. Right, right. And so if you didn't figure it out, that is the topic of our show, nutrition. And, you know, in the past, Richard, we've talked about this a lot, like how important, you know, children are. And, you know, we've talked about children in sports and and um, and we are going to be, once we get to introduce our guest, I mean, the whole tilt tonight is going to be nutrition for kids and children, which is, you know, that's our future. Not to sound obvious or anything, but, you know, getting our kids the proper nutrition is going to be such an important thing moving forward just as a country and as a people and in the world, you know. It is. I don't know the stats, but certainly it's been labeled, you know, an epidemic. And I have to say, this is incredibly personal. I'm so happy uh, we have this guest tonight because Shani Mari is going to educate me as well as everybody else. I mean, what to feed your kids, you know, the snacks at the end of the game. You know, we cringe. We probably don't even realize, um, you know, what we're feeding and what we're giving. And we don't know what we don't know. So it's really challenging. Um, you know, there's just so many options to give quicker options and so much controversy about what is actually healthy and what will actually help your kid perform better uh, mentally, you know, physically, cognitively, everything. Totally. And before we get into introducing our guest, you know, the last few episodes, Dr. Richard, we've been following your journey on your, you went to Kansas City two weekends ago, and we had the show right when you got back from the airport and everything of your tryouts for the 35 plus Maccabee games in Israel next summer. So, you know, expound as much or as little as you want to just to let people out there know what your thoughts are right now with it. Yeah, it's it's incredible uh journey that's paralleled uh, me to look into other athletes. What do they do when they prepare for competition? How do they transition afterwards uh specifically to my journey? I found out soon after our show, uh, who knows, 
Maybe the team's listening out there. Maybe. Uh, but, uh, you know, they found out I was named uh, an alternate to uh, this year's team that will be traveling to uh, Israel to play in the 2017 Maccabee Games, 35 and over. Uh, so, yes, I know my, my limitations <laughs> based on age. But uh, so, you know, that means uh, we're hopeful but, but apprehensive. Uh, you're kind of, you know, it's good news, but it's also uh, a sign that you're kind of on the outside right now. And that means that uh, it would require another participant to opt out of going uh, for me to attend. So, um, and with that comes, you know, a little bit of a lull and then the rediscovery. How do you get back out there? How do you keep nurturing yourself after you've made this big goal and pushed yourself so right. hard for so long? And and little birdies come along and say, how's your nutrition? And are you taking a multivitamin? And, <laughs> you know, hey, you're not a, you know, you're not a spring chicken anymore. You know, there's, there's little different things from uh, massage to adjustments to taking a real look at intake um, that, that have been brought to my attention. So that, that's kind of great. You know, that's where I, I feel like I'm, I'm really learning and growing again. And it also, uh, you know, gets you excited again. Right. And so it's, you know, so we're still going to be following your journey for a while here. Thank you. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's, it's uh, renewing itself and it's, it's introducing me to tremendous people out there who've tried a lot of things and put themselves uh, through, you know, risks and, uh, and commitment to become professional athletes or trainers or bodybuilders um, on many levels. So it's exciting. And we're meeting uh, the people who are caring for them and guiding them and coaching them and giving nutrition right. tips. And so as a segue into introducing our guest, as everyone out there knows, I'm sure, our thousands and thousands of watchers and listeners, every week we have a feature called Richard Listens, List of Three. And this week, our topic is going to be three common mistakes when helping teens and kids losing weight. And it's actually based off of our guests and a new promotion she has. So it's going to be a very informative and exciting uh, and educational Richard Listens list of three this week. Great. I'm ready to learn. And with that being said, Richard, please go ahead and introduce our guest tonight. Well, without further ado, I would like to introduce an esteemed colleague referred to us by our former guest, Dr. Matthew Lefferman, who's out there and uh, um, going to people where they're at, going into the home. I feel like this could be like an intervention. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll invite you over after. Uh, but going into people's homes and helping them with learning how to eat better, be healthier, and make smart decisions on a nutritional basis. And she's got also a blog and an amazing website. And uh, hopefully you'll uh, sign up. And without further ado, Ms. Shani Mari. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And actually, it's Shani Mara. Shani uh, Mara, uh, writer. But, Yes. Writer. And, you know, right. to, you know, me. we've just met tonight for the first time. So, you know, it's Shani not like Mara we're going to. Shani Brighter. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> so we were fortunate enough to meet you through Dr. Matthew Lefferman. And, you know, obviously we've been in communication leading up to tonight. But, yeah, tonight's the first time we're getting to meet you live. So it's a real treat. Treat for me, too. Thank you. So you'll know when she gets her own television show. It was started here. Exactly. Yes. Because, <laughs> um... Yeah, dare I say, this is your first time doing a television show type of thing, right? It is. I actually was on, I was a doctor show a couple of years, maybe three years ago. There was a short interview. Um, it's on, on YouTube right now. Um, but this is my first official, my own, I guess, interview, independent of a group of doctors. Wow, so, nice. Yeah. And you said it's on something called YouTube? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yes, but this is great because this is your first time doing live and three cameras in our studio here at the beautiful UBN Radio TV Studios at the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. This is living life. This is exciting. So <laughs> let's start out with, I just want you to kind of give us a little bit of your background, you know, and let us know what you're about. And then sure. we'll really dive deep into topics. Sure. Well, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I specialize in working with families, kids, and teens. And um, 
I have a private practice here in Los Angeles and Beverly Hills, and I also have an office in Encino where I see families and I work with individuals or a full family. Um, prior to becoming a dietitian, my background is actually in the culinary field. So I owned and operated a catering company and a bakery called Shaney Cake. Believe it or not, a dietitian that owned a bakery. It's actually wow. true. And I went to culinary school um, and I sold that company before I went back to graduate school to become a dietitian. Wow. Because what I really, my passion is, is, I mean, I love feeding people and I do that all the time in my private life. Um, but I love teaching people how to nourish their bodies well. And so that's what I do every day. And I help families get back to the basics. And it's really a passion of mine. And there's many pediatricians around the city that refer to me and clients. And it's just, you know, a dream come true. I love what I do. That is so wild that yeah. you come from a culinary background and that you had a cake company. I did. What was, what was the epiphany or what was it that you said, like, you know what, I need to not focus on cakes and I need to focus on nutrition. Was there an epiphany or something like that? Well, I'd always been interested in nutrition. So it was always there. And I always, be and I believe that you can have a balance. You can have a piece of cake and you can eat well and nourish well. It's, it's a balance. So I'm glad uh, you went there. Cause I know Peter was going to ask about donuts <laughs> <laughs> so, so. in moderation. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to go there at some point. Like. Everything yeah. in moderation. Do you like yeah. donuts? Yeah. I've got a whole thing about donuts. Oh, you okay. Know, my, you have to tell me. My Instagram is donut spirit, you know, oh. so <laughs> I'll have to check that out. <laughs> it's basically since I was a young teenager, I've just had a dream of opening a donut shop that's still lives within me but wow i do want to make them on the healthier tip maybe yeah. like faux nuts on third street you know that sort of thing yeah well there there are ways to do it healthier right but that was actually it was a childhood dream of mine to open shaney cake oh wow and so i actually followed that passion and i literally i just followed it and i did it against everyone's you know thought of how are you going to do that wow. <laughs> how are you going to sell cookies and how, how are you going to do it and i did it that's a i mean yeah. that's a great story right there yeah it, it's a it's a really good story of inspiration and motivation and then you sold it so it must have been a really great company yeah it was a successful small company um but i was able to sell it and um took a little time off and i was always passionate about nutrition and I remember walking on the campus for CSUN and I said, this is exactly where I need to be learning, really honing my, my knowledge about nutrition so that I can then really teach people how to nourish well. So nutrition and what I do is not just about teaching diet because I don't really teach diet. It's more about teaching people how to nourish, enjoy food, but do it from nourishing is different than diet. Doesn't that... You know, it feels different. It feels different, exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of my philosophy and how I approach it with families. That's even really fascinating because I've never really thought about it that in depth. Like, you know, I just think like, oh, you help with diets, but you're right. Nourishing yeah. and diet is very different. It's very different. And I, I don't teach diet. I don't even weigh people in my office. Um, I don't focus on that at all. I focus on nourishing your body for good health no matter what you come to me for. So, um, and so it makes it more doable. It makes it more real. Um, it doesn't seem so overwhelming. And I, and especially with families today, everybody is so busy that I do not want to overwhelm. If anything, I want to simplify, make it a lot easier for families to understand how to nourish, you know, nourish their kids, nourish themselves. And, um, that's what I do after working with hundreds and hundreds of families. I've just kind of figured out how, how to do it so that it works. Yeah, and that's I can't wait to hear more tips about that. I'm sure the our watchers and listeners out there are dying to know some of these sure. things that you're speaking of. But why don't we kind of begin things now that we know a little bit about your background and your passion for nutrition. And then obviously you started your own nutrition office? I did, but right after I graduated, I actually worked at um, Cedar sinai Medical Center for many years. Oh, wow. So I have a strong clinical nutrition background working inpatient and outpatient um, in many, I think, four different departments. So I am able to really understand the medical nutrition aspect 
of working with people along with the food and the nourishing aspect. So I put it together and there's a, a nice depth of understanding. And that's that's where I come from. That's where I work from. Wow. So Dr. Richard, we are dealing with the real deal here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so you know, when you have Cedar Sinai training and medical knowledge, it gives a lot of credibility and trust. Uh, so it's, I just, I'm hearing two things right now. I'm hearing, you know, no shaming with the dieting. Right. And, you know, make it fun, keep it simple, and, you know, solid medical clinical background, which for parents at least, that builds a lot of trust when they let you in their home. Yes, exactly. Because people get tied to their cultural love of certain foods, right? I'm sure they're they're not always easy to take the suggestions initially, or how do you find it? Well, you know, that's interesting is that, you know, when I sit down with a family, and it might be for one of the kids, but I like to treat it as a family affair, a lot of times people are concerned. Are you going to take away my favorite food? What about this? Am I not going to be able to eat pizza again? And the answer is you're definitely going to be able to eat the foods that you enjoy and that you love. It's not about eliminating. It's just about balancing. It, that's really the key. There's no food that's off limits. This is not a wow. diet. This is not a last supper. At all, it's just sounds about, like donuts are safe, Peter. Yeah, donuts. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> That's all we needed. I'm gonna like use some kind of quote, like you know, five out of six of the top <laughs> registered dietitians say that my donuts are okay. Yes. If you eat one quarter of one once a week, <laughs> that'll be the asterisk. So I know, I know, Richard, that you actually have some questions to get us going. But one thing I'm curious of before we like really dive deep into into the aspect of for children and teens, um, what made you interested in that angle of nutrition, of focusing on families, teens, and kids? That's a great question. Um, It was uh, working at Cedars, inpatient on the floors, and seeing all these people that came in with health challenges and multiple health challenges and not having enough time to really properly help them and educate them. And I thought, you know what? We need to start with the younger generation. We need to inspire parents, um, to inspire their kids, to make shifts that will affect their life positively so that we can avoid some of the major illnesses like diabetes um, and the illnesses that come along with that, decrease the cardiovascular risk, um, work, you know, help decrease obesity. And how can I do that best is by starting with the family and starting with the younger generation. And so I just have such a passion for doing that. Um, and I'm excited because I'm just about to launch an online uh, program for families with kids when they're concerned about their weight. Um, and it's a very... Um, it's a non-diet approach. It's a really wonderful, very supportive um, approach to help parents help their kids. Wow, that's exciting. And I think we actually, that's kind of a little teaser for us, because once we get into the Richard Listens list of three a little bit later, it will kind of seg us right into what that promotion is. I, I can't wait to hear about it. But, uh, you know, people are going to have to wait a little bit because there's some more great information coming across. Richard, before you get into the couple of questions that you have for her, like regarding nutrition and kids, there's a lot of crossover between your two fields. Am I right? Or I mean, I'm sitting, I'm sitting between two like really high level professionals here at the top of their game, psychologist, registered dietitian, nutritionist. I think you're just trying to get an excuse to take the Cub score right now. <laughs> no, but in all, no, but in all serious, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I mean, you know. It feels like stating the obvious, you know, that nutrition and your, your mentality, your well-being should be linked together. I mean, it, it feels like we know this, you know. I, I just feel like we know it, but doing it seems to be so hard or making that connection between food, and, and, you know, and, and your mood, <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't think that it's commonly implemented to the level that it could be or what I see, you know, when people – you know, come in to see me, I'm not really sure they're tracking things like late night eating or quantities of sugars. Maybe, maybe just, it's not, they're not really aware of it, or maybe I'm becoming more aware of how things affect me. But, uh, you know, I would think I would love there to be more integration. I'd love there to be more discussions like this and much more information available. That's great. And I know I keep saying like, 
Okay, Richard, you got a couple questions for her, but I've kind of like lost sight of our Facebook Live. Go like to the listeners. Kinda, they speak for me. Yeah, so check this out. Like I didn't even mention in the beginning of the show, but you know, we are on Facebook Live at facebook.com mm-hmm. slash Richard Listens. So if you go there and make a comment or like us or something, we may very well mention you on the air. And we've got a lot of people listening right now. It's really exciting. So I uh, let's see. We have got Gail Weintraub Wetrial. I think maybe she's someone you know. It actually Shane? is. <laughs> <laughs> Good guess. Yeah. So <laughs> she's she's here with us, and and actually, I'm guessing maybe this is her husband, Sean Wetrial. Says this is great. Very excited it's for you. It's actually her nephew. Okay. <laughs> but he says this is great, and he's really excited for you. Well, thank you both for listening. You that see? makes me very happy. You're reaching the younger generation yes. already. Yes. Yes. And then actually, we've got a lot of Shaney fans here. Vincent Fiaco, Fiasho. Oh, Fiaco? my! One of my hiking buddies. Hi. He says. <laughs> oh, he says. Hey, Shaney, don't forget about hiking. I too. know. Oh. I know. We got to get back on the trail. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know. I mean, we haven't even mentioned exercise or anything. That's just like a whole another aspect. But yeah, thanks for bringing up hiking and reminding us about exercise, there, Vincent. And yeah, this we are full of Shaney fans here, Richard. Um, Peter Glassman says, Shaney is the real deal. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. And so are you, Peter. All right. <laughs> I, that, I, that, does it, that, that does lead me to a question, though. Yeah. About, like, you know, hiking. You know, everyone's carrying protein bars. Now there's, like, you know, I'm not going to give any endorsements here, but this one has zero sugar. I mean, how, how do you deal with them in general, the whole topic of, like, nutrition bars? And, nutrition and bars? Well, I think one of the main things is to get back to the basics, is to choose a bar that is actually as close to whole food as you can get. There are so many bars out there that if you look at the ingredients, can you read them? Do you know what they are? They're highly processed. They're synthetic. And, you know, when we're feeding our kids, you want to think about feeding them whole foods. And so there are certain bars that have more just nuts and dried fruit and fresh foods. You can read all the ingredients. They're actually real food. And those are the bars that I would recommend going for more so than the bars that are the wafer bars that are not. It's right. you more know, of a cookie. Yeah. Or just it's it's highly processed and put together. Uh, my feeling is that we need real food. We need whole food. So often today it's. It's processed, packaged, you know, foods that crinkle and crunch. Um, but let's get back to the basics. So do you want me to endorse a bar? Yeah. Do you, sure. what, are, what are your some of your favorite bars? Like, we want to know for sure. Okay. If you're going hiking, what do you take? And what do you recommend yeah. for, like, parents taking kids out for the day? Well, if you're not going to make your own bar, which is something I enjoy doing, uh-huh. then uh, a Lara bar is actually pretty darn good. And there must be... I don't know, two dozen flavors. And that's like L A R A. L A R A B A R. So it's. Oh, Lara Bar, right. Is it up? It's up. Okay. It's up. So that's a good bar because, like, the apple pie, for example, are, I believe it's walnuts, maybe almonds, um, dried apples, maybe some cinnamon. Um, very different than having a bar that you can't read the ingredients on. Right. So that's the kind of bar that I would recommend. And Lara Bar, you can reach us at <laughs> richardlistens.com if for you'd like to send us a, a box of Lara Bars for our listeners. We would gladly or we'll eat them on the show and be healthy. Any others? Uh, there's another bar called the Organic Food Bar, which is really good. Uh, parents, you may like those. Um, some kids will like those. Others won't. Uh, so the Lara Bar has a lot of good flavors. Now, the kids, what do kids like today? What do they like? They like the, the they kids. They like Z-bars. My Z-bar. kids like Z-bars. Exactly. The Z-bars. So it's really good, isn't it's it? It's chocolatey. It's chocolate. It's more like a candy bar. If you look yeah. at the amount of sugar in it, there's quite a bit. Um, and it is a little bit more processed. So I'm looking at the sugar load, which today's kids, you know, the carbohydrate load, which we can get into, that would be something nice to talk about. It's a lot. It's higher than what what is ne- what we all need. So, 
the Cliff Bar to me is more like a treat bar, even though it is actually given like a real protein bar or food bar. Yeah, it's, right. It's got a hiker on the cover, right? Exactly. Yes. So there, it looks really healthy, but it's really fun and sweet. There it is on the screen. It's you know that brownie bar is super good, but it's it's as much sugar probably as a brownie. Wow. Yeah. So basically, you're saying the Lara bar and the organic food bar. The Lara are bar. Your go-tos. Yeah, the Lara bar does have sugar also because you're going to get sugar in any fruit, right? Fructose, fruit sugar. Right. However, it's a more natural form than the added refined sugars that you will find in some of the kids' bars. So, a couple more people, fans of Shaney out here. <laughs> you know, uh, we mentioned Peter Glassman already that said you're the real deal. He goes on to say she practices what she preaches and that Shaney has changed our family's life. That's amazing. Well, uh, thank you, Peter. (laughs) That's very nice. I've actually helped his daughter with her. uh, She was having some, she needed some help and there's been some good success there. And so I'm really glad that that's made a positive impact on the whole family. And then another fan of yours, Megan Kaufman. She says, love, Shaney. Thank you, Megan. Very nice. And then we've got a fan squeaking in here, Richard. You know, All right, I mean, please. Shaney's getting, running the table. Blown away here. I know. <laughs> but our, our good friend, Chris Johnson, has said, inspiration, yes. But glad to see that Chris is out there listening to us because he was our first inaugural show. That's right. And I hope Chris is now going to get Lara Bars at his soccer practice for all the Right. Growing athletes that he's training and carpooling around the city with his devoted heart every weekend. Right. You know, that's something good to talk about, too, is what is what is a balanced snack for kids? So Well, that's that it, especially, yeah, these, uh, you know, I'm exposed to the tournament soccer, travel soccer. I mean, how do you keep these kids fed and fed healthy when they're on the go and traveling and limited breaks? And uh, Well, what are the things that you're seeing? Well, some of these tournaments are being held at carnival grounds. So, <laughs> uh, but for the most part, people are trying to bring, you know, I think oranges and apples and, and a lot of bars. Um, of course, you know, Pringles and, and Gatorade and fruit drinks, like we started to mention, you know, sneak their way in there. So the question is, you know, is this really helping them, especially in the hot California sun, or is this maybe dehydrating them or putting them on a sugar high that they're going to crash midway through the game? So, um, so what are some healthy snacks? Well, let's just talk about that. Some of the <laughs> some of the sports drinks. Sure. Right. So there is an organization and I'm just I don't want I don't know the exact one. It's one of the pediatric organizations that does actually say and talk about how those sports br- drinks are not even necessary uh, for the average kid athlete who is out and about and that water is actually the ideal drink of choice. And the reason, again, is because of the sugar load, is do we need to give our kids that much sugar? And the answer is no. They, If they eat a balanced diet where they eat fruits and vegetables and protein and fats and grains and starches, they're going to get the nutrients that they need without the added sugar. And the sugar in the liquid form will hit and spike your blood sugars pretty quickly. And it can become, it's a trend. Sometimes I hear that the kids actually ask for it because they think it's a good thing and their friends have it. But those drinks are not necessarily um, ideal for health. And so my, my suggestion is to actually go with water as your drink well, of choice. Yeah. yeah. It just goes to show like marketing, you know, they just, those marketing engines just make you think like the kids got to have the sports drinks. Right. It's true. And then the kids start asking for it. Right, you see it on the field, and you see it on the commercial, and you see it on the college football or, you know, European League soccer sideline, and you think, I need that too. Right. You know, so is there a number? Can I? Ask, is there a number of for like amount of sugar per day if your kid is ten or sixteen, or I mean, is there a range that you recommend people in, or do you just push them towards balance? Well, that's that's a good question, and. How I'd like to approach that is to actually talk about what balanced meals look like as opposed to what many kids, you know, meals look like. 
So how about if we approach it that yeah, way? Yeah, that sounds because great. It's not Bur- burger, fries, and a Coke is balanced, right? Yeah. Well, there's quite a, there's a lot of the food groups in there, so it is it is balanced in a way. Um, so so the average, like for an example, uh, a typical a breakfast could be cereal with milk, okay, or maybe just some pancakes with syrup. You're saying that's okay? I'm saying that that's a typical, okay, like right. when I have somebody that I'm working with. That's what they're eating. The, yeah, the, you know, kids tend to like, which under, is understandable, more of just the starchy breakfast items. However, what I would recommend is to more balance a plate, which is to have some sort of protein on your plate. Let's, for example, say eggs, okay? Um and then to have a little bit of the starch rather than the whole meal be the starch. So maybe it might be a piece of whole wheat toast. I'm keeping it really simple right now. And maybe with the eggs, you have some avocado because the protein and the eggs or some a little bit of cheese even on top of it. Um, but that protein and the fat is what's going to really help satisfy all of us, Mm. rather than going towards the high starch, then you can also put on the plate a little bit of fruit. So in that balance of the fruit, the protein, the healthy fat, and a little bit of the grain, you're going to feel more satisfied. A lot of, so the high carbohydrate or sugar, like you said, uh, diet is what keeps us craving more and more of it. And when you balance it out and you add some more protein and fat, you can decrease those cravings and it can lead to not eating as much um, and feeling more satisfied. And in that vein, since we're talking about balanced meals and everything, and I do want to say that after this question, we're going to get into our Richard Listens list of three. But to keep on this train of thought, a lot of parents out there, I'm sure, are wondering, like, hey, I'm putting together packing my kids' lunch. What's what's a good lunch for them to package for their kids? A good lunch, what I would suggest is think about this picture in your mind. Think about a plate, okay? And a quarter of the plate is a protein. A quarter of the plate would be a starch or grain. And then half the plate, fruits and veggies, with also some fat somewhere on that plate. Is that the diagram right there? Where? I don't see no, it. Oh. It's quite, not up yet. Not quite but close, that's but. so okay. but it kind of give us samples though so, of protein sure. of the fat. So what a balanced easy uh lunch would be would be let's say a sandwich on a whole wheat bread that has some sort of protein that your kids will eat whether it's turkey or chicken or uh If you're vegetarian, it might be some cheese. Uh, It might be tuna fish. There's many different things that you could do. It might be egg salad, some sort of protein, because that protein is going to help satisfy. Okay? Okay. And then you can, if the kids will like, you can put some avocado on the sandwich because that's a healthy fat, right? And then as the sides, you can do some fruit and vegetables. Maybe it's some cut up berries because berries are kind of sort of still in season right now. Or maybe it's an apple or one of those little cuties. And then some cut up veggies, whatever it is that that they would like, whether it's cucumbers or carrots. And if you want to inspire them by giving them something to dip in, then I would encourage that if it's going to help them to actually eat their veggies. And The other thing is that they're going to see their friends eating lots of, you know, fun foods, desserts, and all that kind of stuff. And so I am a total realist. So the question is, how do you actually get some of that fun food in? And what you can do is you just put a treat in. You could put it in a little, uh, like a salad dressing container or a little Ziploc bag. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. But if you put a little something, they're going to be real happy. Uh, rather than giving them a whole lot, and it'll just do the trick. So it's a balance. Even though it is a sandwich, it has the protein in it, it has the starch, it has the veggies, the fruit, and the healthy fat. Another example 
could be more like a bento box. And that's becoming very popular Mm, these days. So if you don't actually have a bento box, that's okay. You can makeshift your own by just combining little containers. But it could be a container that, for example, has some cut-up rotisserie chicken. And if there's something you they want to dip in it, that's great. Uh, it could be some veggies on the side, whether it's if your kids even like a pickle. You could put a pickle in. You know, some kids may like an olive. You could put a cheese stick in. Uh, you could put in maybe a couple of cherry tomatoes. You could put in a bunch of little things so that it's enjoyable. Maybe it's a little bit of guacamole with a few, you know, baked chips. Um, so chips are can be okay. Yeah, it's it's all about the balance, and it's about it, you know I I believe that kids need to be kids, and we have to make it realistic for them. Yeah, I just can't get away from like taking my kids for ice cream after you know a game. Again, not, not every game, but you know it's like it's like the kid in me. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, oh, it's me, it's me that's teaching this to my kids. You know, like I'm the one. I don't do it often, but. I make, it makes me happy to bring home the donut once in a while. You know what? You know? I grew up, and I, I have a feeling my dad is listening right now. <laughs> so hi, Dad. Um, Actually, and someone dad. else is listening. Um, Alan Brider oh. Oh. says, my I am such a lucky guy to have Chaney as my wife. I oh. am so proud. And you do an amazing oh. website, too, Alan. Yes. Yeah, Alan, we were enjoying your Brighter website Creative. Work. Yes, <laughs> they actually... Love your website. So thank you, Alan. I love you, too. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. And, and Richard, you do have another fan out there. Daniel Rotberg has checked in with us. Oh. He says, make them happy. So we'll He's, make everyone happy. And this happy. is an organic farmer in Los Angeles. So wow. So check out Backyard Harvest. He Great. makes me eat a lot of cucumbers. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. So I didn't realize that. It, it pays to really have one friend doing, and, and, and it's great to have one person being a role model because you don't even know sometimes. What you don't know and how, how he hopefully he's going to help me plant the garden. I'm wow, going to do it. Great. I'm going to do it, folks. That's so wow, great. Wow, way to from, go. From the basketball courts to the garden. I Excellent. will challenge myself in other ways this year. It sounds like Daniel might be a good show down the road, Dr. Richard. I don't know. Let's Maybe. see if he stays tuned long enough. Yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> so I do need to stop for one moment so we could do our Richard Listens list of three. And this week's list of three is tied right in with your great looking website and a new campaign and promotion you're doing. So this week for the Richard Listens list of three, we are going to list three out of your six common mistakes when helping teens and kids losing weight. So first of all, before we get into the first one, tell us a little bit about this promotion you have coming up. Sure. Well, on my website, on the blog, if you go to the blog page... You can click on the blog and read the... And remind us your website name? Is shaneymara.com. That's S as in Sam, H-A-N-I, Mara, M-A-R-A.com. Okay. So you can go to the blog page and you can read the blog. And at the top of the blog, there is a link that will give you, if you click on it, you will actually get access to the six common mistakes when helping kids and teens lose weight. And these are things that can be very helpful. And the reason I put this together is because so many parents today, I work with so many parents with kids that they're concerned about their eating habits and how it's affecting their weight. So this is kind of a very gentle approach to helping them without a diet. And I give a lot of really good pointers here. And when you get this freebie here, when you get this, um, it's wonderful, you'll be getting some other really good information down the road. Wow, so we're lucky enough here tonight in our Richard Listens list of three to get three of these common mistakes. So without further ado, give us one of the common mistakes when helping (laughs) to... Helping teens and kids losing weight. Sure. So the first mistake that you could make is to avoid fats, thinking that, well, if I want to help my child or teen lose weight, I need to eliminate fat from the diet. And that's a real big mistake Mm. because there are certain different foods that help you to fill up. You could fill up on your carbohydrates and grains, or you can fill up on and feel satisfied off protein and fat. So that fat is actually, fat does not make us fat. 
believe it or not. It's how if you're probably too many carbohydrates is making us fat. Right. That's where the challenge is. <laughs> yeah. And so the goal is to decrease the sugar and the carbohydrate load by balancing the meal and making sure that there is fat in the meal. And or with a snack, uh, you know, at different times during the day because it will really help satisfy. I've seen family after family that has that I've worked with where you know there is a child who has a big appetite and wants to go for the carbohydrates and they're hungry 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 and when I explain to the parent if you decrease that carbohydrate load and if you put in more a little bit more protein and fat it's going to decrease their hunger and they're going to feel more satisfied and they're not going to have those and the cravings decrease too so it's really quite amazing yeah. how it works. So that's one thing that I would... Okay, so that, that's one. Yes. And before we get into number two, I just want to let you know, Shaney, that Gail Weintraub is telling us, Wittreal? telling you... What's that? Gail Wittriel? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Like on here it says <laughs> Gail Weintraub Wittriel. She just wanted to let you know that Ira is listening. Hi, Uncle Ira. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm very happy to hear that both of you are on because they are on the East Coast. Wow. wow. Yeah. They stayed up late for yes, this. Yes, they are the best. And Richard Tom Ware checked in and said a garden of pastries. I don't know if that's <laughs> – that must be an inside <laughs> I, joke. I, I did, well, I did say I would be planting a garden. So, ah, so, so he so said so a garden of up. pastries, right. Because <laughs> I would be planting a garden of donuts. <laughs> yes. Right, okay. You see. So – Number two on Richard Listen's list of three, we're going to get another tip. Sure. So mistake number two would be to focus on calories. So you may pick up a food and think, oh, this is only has 300 calories in it. This is great. But my question to you is, what are those calories comprised of? So is it 300 calories of a muffin? And what is a muffin? It has the sh it's basically carbohydrate load, right? So it's very so you're still going to be hungry after. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So the difference is, and that could, for example, that muffin could be breakfast, right? Easily, as opposed to 300 calories that came from a combination of some eggs with maybe a sprinkle of cheese on it, a little avocado, right? Uh, maybe some fruit, berries, something, and a piece of toast, you're going to get much different balance and it's going to affect the child or whoever's eating that so much differently. So having the protein and the fat will help to decrease the cravings, keeping them more satisfied, blood sugars more steady longer, which is ideally what we want. We want blood sugars to stay more steady and more constant rather than spike through a carbohydrate load. Gotcha. So that's number two. Number so, two. And I should say, I don't focus on calories. I don't think it's about the calories. When I teach the balance plate, I don't ever talk about calories. But a lot of times people will come in and, and talk about it. So I actually say it's not about the calories. And it's really easy to think it is about the calories. It really is, yeah. And so number three on the Richard Listens list of three, what would that be, Shaney? Well, let's pick number three. Mistake number three on this list actually says serve food family style. So mm. there are different ways to serve. You can either plate in the kitchen or you can put all the food on the table where you can just, and that's what's called family style. So you're saying that's a mistake. Don't do that. You can take too much. Exactly. If it's in front of you, what happens? If you're just sitting there as a family talking, it's really easy to take more even if your body is satisfied and doesn't need it. So it will it can inspire mindless eating. Interesting. Yeah. And so what I recommend is to actually plate in the kitchen the protein and the starch. And you can also plate the vegetable and then on the table actually put the vegetable and the salad so that if you're wanting a little bit more, you're not necessarily diving into the potatoes or the pasta, but you're actually allowing for more of a balanced plate. Because a lot of times what happens is that we can eat more even if our body is satisfied because the food is there because we're just enjoying it. Right. So it's really about listening and honoring your hunger and 
feeling satisfied rather than eating just because it's there. So that's mm-hmm. mindful eating. That's a whole other concept that's really, yeah, really important. We don't realize till later that we've eaten way too much. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Those three tips right there alone. And that's our Richard Listens list of three. Just to let everyone out there know, and Richard and Shaney, we have all of about four minutes left to our show. Now I got to know so, what the other three are. I got to get on I the I know. Site. So, <laughs> Shaney, tell people how can they find out the other three common mistakes? Well, go to shaneymara.com and click on the blog link at the top of the screen on the right-hand side, and you will get to the blog, and then you can read the blog. But there is a link within the blog that if you click on that link, that will lead you to the six common mistakes. And so you'll actually read the rest of it. And through that link, you will also have an opportunity to get some other really great information that I will be sending you down the road. That's amazing. And Jarvis, let's go ahead and put up her contact information on the screen there. So anyone that wants to get in touch with you, Shaney, how do they do it? Well, you can go to my website, shaneymara.com, and you can send me a message. Or you can call me directly at 310-684-3610. Either way, but that number is also on my website. And then you're also on Facebook and Instagram, correct? Correct. And where can we find you there? At Shaney Mara. And on Facebook, it is look up Shaney Mara. I don't know the exact... uh, Shaney Mara... They'll find you, though. Yeah, they'll find me, for sure. And so in the spirit of... We still actually never got to your couple of questions, <laughs> Richard. But we still, what are we, your questions? We still do have a couple of minutes. Let's, no, I let's think get they to were, those. I think they were. I mean, you know, it's. it's Did you have a specific question? Well, about it's about your... the sports drinks. Okay. And, and about the bars. I think that's a lot of it. And I think that Shaney kind of answered it too. The breakfast in the morning. You know, we mentioned the speed of life, and the kids want even when we bring them the the healthier cereal. They want cereal. They want. They want waffles, and um, it just doesn't seem like it's enough. And I wonder how it, it's a, it's concerning to me. Yeah, and it's, I know this is what so many parents are thinking. Like, especially with multiple kids and multiple jobs, you know, how do you give them what they want, what they what tastes good, and yet still, um, you know, make it healthy? So, well, part of it. Do we have a couple minutes? We've got a couple minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes to be okay. Exact. So part of that is actually pre-planning and preparing on the part of the parent. So it's thinking ahead of time, and there are certain foods that you can, you know, get ready ahead of time. Um, I have, for example, you can make a great pancake recipe that actually has other things in it that make it highly nutritious and doesn't give a full carb load. So there are other recipes and things that are available out there if you look online that are available. Uh, Like a breakfast smoothie even is a really good idea. And where you could actually get some protein, some fat, some fruit, all in a breakfast smoothie, and that's pretty easy in the morning. So there are a lot of different ways, but it is pre-planning. It's thinking it through ahead of time rather than on the spot. There's different egg dishes too that you can do. Okay, and like like I said, if people, we've given your contact information, if they want to reach out to you, it's amazing. You know, we had so much that we wanted to cover, I and mean, we've just hit the tip of the iceberg. But I also just wanted to mention really quickly that I think it's great that our First Lady, Michelle Obama, has made her mission in her stay in the White House with the Let's Move.gov program with, you know, child obesity and children eating healthy has been like a mandate of hers. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and I'm, I totally support that. And I'm very happy. I'm thrilled to be you know, part it's of out that there. movement. There's so many positive influences and information out there. We're just combating a lot of our own patterns. Like you said, even positive things from, uh, you know, the Entman's box my dad brought home or, you know, the donut that, uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, I know, is in Peter's heart. Right. Uh, you know, but there's a lot of conditioning out there. Um, and, we, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And like you said, learning, I'd love to learn, you know, new ways to make eggs, uh, healthy ingredients uh, in our smoothies, and, and just think ahead. It's like everything else that I guess I work on with my clients. The more prepared, the more you think about a certain aspect of your life and put energy into it, the more you can yield results. And unfortunately, with food being easily available and cheap and not always the healthiest option um, takes away our 
our thought process. One thing that I'd like to say just in closing is it's about getting back to the basics. It really is. It's about eating whole foods, fresh foods, rather than so much which is available today of the packaged processed foods. So if I could say one thing. That's getting what, back to the basics. I love getting it. back yeah, to the great. basics. I love it. You said that. Back to basics. I heard no shaming from you. Right. Don't weigh. Don't count. Just learn and start learn to how get to more balance. balanced. Yeah. And one other thing is you don't even have to talk to your kids in so much detail about this. You can just take action as the parent and just make shifts, make habit shifts as a family. And the kids usually often just fall right in line and the shifts happen. So it doesn't have to be a big conversation about this even. I like that. Shifts happen. Yes. So on that note, <laughs> I, we're so grateful to have you on the show because child health and nutrition is so important. So Shaney, thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. It's been so much fun. And Likewise, really quickly us. in closing, we will be back live on Monday, October 31st. And just a really quick sneak Special peek. Special Halloween episode. Yeah. And we we haven't quite formulated it yet, but we do have some really exciting things ahead. We're going to, in the future, we have an ex-NBA basketball player on our docket. We've got a filmmaker who's putting together a documentary about Lenny Kraselberg, the Olympic swimmer. Um, and then we also have a psychologist who specializes in performance psychology and such. That's and we're right. going to bring someone on that improv does therapy. improv therapy. So we have a lot of exciting shows coming up. The next one is October 31st. And don't forget, you could reach us at... RichardListens.com, Facebook slash RichardListens, Twitter at RichardListens. And thanks for all those adding me on Instagram, all your inspiring people out there. I'm loving it. Yeah, thanks for tuning in to Richard Listens, and we'll see you live on October 31st. And thank you, Jarvis, for your great job.